what's up you guys hope you guys are doing awesome so today we're gonna do something different where i'm gonna show some of my worst plays that i've made over the past four months you know i think everyone's a genius in the bull market and it can be very tempting to get a little a bit cocky in this environment where like you buy every dip and everything goes up so here's just a kind of a reminder of like what can happen like things can go wrong this bull market will end just to keep it a little bit more real so yeah i just had to balance out because i think i've been on like a 14 win streak or just like constant wins but i think i have to retrace my steps and know that there will be losses in the future there already have been major losses in the past so let's keep being real and let's be level-headed okay so let's get into the first one. First one, oh yeah you guys know it crypto blades so for this one there were a lot of mistakes this was back in late june early july i think so this was when i was pretty new to nft crypto gaming so i did not create a proper research routine like the deep dive videos you guys have seen so i've done research for other things like stocks and DeFi projects and stuff however crypto gaming is a whole nerd beast whenever you go to a different niche you'll have to specify your new research routine you have to create a new method to really zone in on your craft so i didn't do that and i paid the price big time so secondly i also gave into fomo and normally i would swing large caps however a lot of these games are super small caps so i didn't know how to work i didn't know that they explosively jumped up in price but also explosively crashed down so I literally gave into FOMO and I bought at the peak after literally 120x. I bought around like, what, like $120 and it was like a dollar, like literally a month or two ago. So that was, my gosh, that was silly. Absolutely silly. Then next one is I ignored all of the major red flags. So I also didn't understand how tokenomics worked deeply because when I was swinging those like fundamental large caps, like swinging Ethereum, bitcoin and stuff like you kind of didn't really need to know that much about tokenomics right because it's been in the game so long and there's like so many people doing it however with these smaller caps tokenomics is super important knowing the vesting periods when things get released even for the lp staking pools like everything is intertwined right especially these lower caps so with this the team literally gave away a bunch of free skill with each new account so they were literally printing hundreds of dollars which is insane so no knock on their team they were one of the ogs of the crypto gaming space so they helped to pave the way to create a bunch of other great games so a lot of games studied them and then they improved upon that so respect to the team it's just that that's what happens when you're an og you have to pay the price a lot by leading the way right secondly that means we're literally attacking community members uh i mean i i guess i kind of don't blame them for this they literally got a hundred thousand people randomly within like a few weeks i think and they were used to maybe like a thousand hundred people or something so they didn't know how to handle it and i understand i think i helped mod some servers that are like 20 30k people and it really was like super frustrating so i can't imagine modding like 100k people that are literally yelling at you every day because the price is like fluctuating so a lot so no blame towards them so full disclosure king is still an amazing opportunity to swing trade i think their vesting periods open up somewhere in january right so we have like two more months ish and then i think the team opens up later i'm not too sure about that i think they opened up a little bit earlier than usual but there's still plenty of time to swing trade especially with their game launch incoming of q1 2022 so i think that'll be a big sleeper because i think the market cap right now is like a couple of mil like literally like only two three four mil so it's gonna be a big sleeper it's probably gonna be like three four five x maybe even 10 x out of nowhere it's very realistic so we'll keep an eye out for that all right next one is binamon so after getting smashed by crypto blades i didn't learn my lesson well i kind of did but not really where i created my own research routine which was pretty decent it was very similar to the routine i use of like swinging DeFi projects and big market cap projects However, I didn't even follow it. So I think creating something and setting your plans, one thing, but actually executing it is the hard part. 
So you gotta do that. Two, I also bought more NFTs without testing proof of payment first. So Bitemon was also one of the original or one of the older gaming NFT projects, right? It's only like three, four, five, six months old. However, their farming was great in the beginning. I also didn't ignore, I also didn't check their tokenomics, right? Where they were releasing their tokens like really hard every month, like straight off the bat. So I should have known that. I didn't take that into account. So by the time I bought the NFTs, they were running out of their reward pool. So they just started cutting off their reward pool. So I should have known that would happen. And for other major red flags I ignored, there were no major investors to close, disclosed. So investors and partners are very crucial for a project, especially in fields such as NFT gaming, where there's not much known about the field, right? So anything can happen in, in the field and it's important to have great investors and partners to back you up when there are times where things get crazy and you don't know what to do. Next one, there was also no free speech on the Vitamin Discord which I thought was super strange. So you can't really talk bad about Bitemon. You can't really discuss the tokenomics, things were happening. It kind of was like a dictatorship where I'm not sure if they're getting better at that or not. But yeah, it was kind of a weird environment. So, but full disclosure, I think Bitemon can still come back, right? They have really amazing marketing with their TikTok campaigns, music videos and stuff. And they got to the MVB3 top 10. So that's a great sign. They also are developing their own new blockchain called Tango and they're trying to help compensate the community. So I don't think they're a bad ill team. They have like bad intentions. It's just that I think maybe they didn't have major investors to teach them about proper tokenomics and now they're paying the price for it. However, they're trying to compensate the community by offering them whitelisting if you hold NFTs or buy them on into their new projects. However, I'm very curious to see what the demand is. Maybe the demand will be high, especially since that recent price pump and them getting into the top 10 of the MDV finance. So we'll see what happens. Next one, it's a shield NFT collection. I'm not gonna list their names because I think they're very good intentioned people. It's just that they're so new, so yeah, I'm not going to list them, but we'll just go over the main teaching points, right? So, one, I blindly followed an influencer who was paid to promote them, and he's also new to NFTs. So, like, that was a really bad idea for me to just follow someone who's just brand new to this. He might have been newer than me. Then, second one, oops, just deleted that to correct it. Second one was I ignored other major red flags. There was literally zero use case for the NFTs. I think they were planning to make games, but none of them had gaming experience. Secondly, they had no major investors and partnerships. They were just a startup by a bunch of young dudes. And yeah, they had no experience and they were unable to deliver on their promise because they had no experience, right? So they were trying to hype up the chats and they were trying to ride the NFT wave. However, they just didn't have that much experience. So. Again, they were very good-willed people. It's just that they didn't know how to execute it. Then last one, there were no signs of demand from the community, right? So there were decreasing Discord members. There was increasing selling of the supply because of the reasons mentioned above. So I should have taken this into account. So this was just another mistake as I tried to ride that NFT wave myself. However, I just didn't have experience in it. So it also wasn't my niche, right? So my niche is NFT gaming. That's where I can really thrive and succeed. However, this other NFT space was something I should have taken more precaution to. But lastly, I'm glad these all happened, right? So I think Crypto Blades motivated me to create a proper research routine. Then Binamon motivated me to really improve that research routine and to really execute it and to look at things with less bias and that last NFT collection really clarified me that okay maybe it's best I stick to my niche where I can dominate and then I allocate into my long-term portfolio the other projects I like 
like Ethereum, Immutable X, all those other projects that are longer term. So each of these had a very great lesson that I will remember a lot. So I think there's a misconception that emotions should be just avoided and discarded. You should be a robot while trading. However, I think it should be the opposite where you can use your emotions, right? So if you're feeling very fearful, you can use that as a buying opportunity. If you're feeling very euphoric, you can use that as a selling opportunity. If you're feeling angry that you messed up by fomoing into a project like I did for these three, then you can use that as motivation to improve your process as a trader to make use of that next case, which I luckily did with Defina and a couple other projects. Now I'm financially free, which is a great feeling to say. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what are your top mistakes you made and then what you learned from them in the comments below. And yeah, looking forward to the next video. Talk to you guys next time.